A very good evening, Zimbabwe. You are listening to Studio 7 from the Voice of America in Washington. And this is Live Talk. I am Kip Stubey. And I'm Marvelous Mklanganya, who are broadcasting from my home in Washington, D.C., due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Tonight on Live Talk, we are discussing various issues, including the COVID-19 pandemic, the WFP Open Food Security Resilience Program, Fumvutsa Intuasa Program, and the United States elections. Uh, yes, uh, currently, as, you, as uh, Gibbs has just said, you know, there are a lot of programs that are actually uh, taking part in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, since uh, March this year, recorded over 11,000 cases of COVID-19, according to the Ministry of Health, and 9,253 people have recovered and 305 have died. Yesterday alone, there were 74 new COVID-19 cases. Uh, and uh, one death in Bulawayo, has, and Bulawayo has the largest numbers of COVID-19 cases, closely followed by Harare. Uh, worldwide, John Hopkins University reports that there are over 17 million cases and 1.6 million deaths. In the U.S. alone, about 16 million people have tested positive for COVID-19. Almost 300,000 Americans have died due to COVID-19, an issue that has been of contention uh, between uh, the uh, current president, Donald Trump, and Mr. Joe Biden of the Democrats, who has at the moment set up a task force to look at the way forward in combating the high incidence of COVID-19 cases in the USA. Yeah, well, COVID-19 pandemic, World Food Program, Food Security Resilience Program, Program, COVID-19, so COVID-19, COVID-19, 253 as a pepe, COVID-19, University, I want to talk to you about the fact that we are doing a live talk. It's a true group of people who are from Sora Pedenda, COVID-19, Musuechi, Shano, December 11, 2020. Paris, you know, Musuechi, we are doing a nasty, changing to the gang, changing to the Tarisa, should we take a Pedenda, COVID-19, to Tarisa, should we carry any? Yes, should we take a panya? Yes, it's careful. Apo Sanganore WFP, raka wani kwa iro richi shanda. Uye, should we end the ramberi richi shanda nevanu? Varikunji mboza kasi ya nasi ya nekuwa pachi kafu. Vikirino vanga variku mashuingo. Ukovaka wani kwa iwo. Vachishanda ne muri. Ezini madoroba. Nekuwa pa marie kutiva tenge chikafu. Panguwa ino ye COVID-19. Chiange triku tarisa shakare jirongwa shwepu mboza. Nejime shakada aropa nyaya ye chikafu icho chisha triku taura. Tozo tarisa shakare denda re COVID-19. Tinoona bazi reje utano. Remu Zimbabwe, rino taura iro kuti uwandu wevanu wabati wane denda ire COVID-19. Urukura mba uchikwira, e, bazi rino ti pane vanu wano dao zira 11,000. Vawani kwa iwo vachibati wane denda ire COVID-19. Uye shakare paine vanu 305, vawani kwa vachishaya. Imo muno mwa Amerika matiri, tunuona kuti denda ire COVID-19. Raka punya chisero. Uye she ndoi mwenye ya irikunya nyoneta. Uh, panyaya ye kutambiza na masimba uh, kwa va Donald Trump ve ma Republican na va Joe Biden ve ma Democrats. Panyaya iyo ye COVID-19 va Joe Biden va chiti iwo vane urongwa wekuti iwo pa vacha tora masimba vacha yeza kutivano vambo wani kwa iwo vachi feka shunusha kada yese ma maski nejimwewe kwe mkuwa ya kati o oh, kuitra kutichirikwere ichi chisa wani kwe chichiteke shira seja chiri kuita parijino. 
tunaona kuti tichitarisa kuti mu America Paris zvino tunaona kuti e vanhu vakawani kwa iwo vachibatwa nedenda iri ase kutaura kuri kuita John Hopkins University vari kuramba vachikwira uyeshe e, nyika ya America iri kutaura iyo kuti iri kuda kuona kuti zvingamire sei munguva inotevera saka ndo zvimwe zvatichange turi kutarisa uh, pamusoro pezvazvo muno mu America Paris zvino e, pari kutotaurwa iwo kuti there are over 17 million cases yevanhu e pasiro se vabatwa ne covid 19 1.6 million vachiwana kwa vachishaya muno mu America 16 million vanhu vabatwa ne denda ire covid 19 uyeshe 300,000 zema Americans zawani kwa hizo tichishaya shunureva kuti e, over a quarter of a million vanu wawani kwa hizo tichishaya imo muno mwa Amerika pa msoro pede ndare COVID-19 saka change tiliku bata shaka wanda wanda ipo pano chiona kuti shaka mira se chitari sa shakare kutipane na uru kwa shakare ili kune tzaveru shinji ye kupukanyi wa kwemba kwa nga kuru kuitu kwa kubudiriro apo kanzuru ye, ye muu arare ya wani kwa hiyo ichienda kuno pukanya imba hizi asi pane kutaturana pakati pe MDC Alliance ne urumende kutindia ni chaizo alikuta ura kuti izi jitike atishuona kuti kanzuru ili pasi e, pe, e, pe, e, pe local government asi makanzuru akawanda uye jenawa na mea ndewe MDC Alliance nasi jakare chukutari sa kuti izu wa retri planting data wana isu wa Nelson Chamisa the MDC Alliance Vachienda hivyo kuno jigara miti. Saka ndo shumwe cha tiange tuliku kurukura pa msoro peja asho. Ipo pano pachirongwa che live talk. Cha tuno kupai tilukumba muno mu Washington DC. Gibbs. Yes, uh, marvelous. There are millions of people in Zimbabwe who are struggling due to COVID-19. And this has resulted in some organizations like the World Food Program to intervene in order to help the needy. There are hundreds of people who are now under the WFP Open Food Security Resilience uh, Program. So the program has been rolled out in places like Chinoy and Maswingo. We've got uh, Ms. K. Neville of the World Food Program, who actually explains how the program works. Here she comes. So WFP's Urban Social Assistance and Resilience Building Program started at the end of 2019, where we did the pilot in Epworth in Harare. Then in January 2020, we started to rapidly scale up the programme across the country. And then when the COVID-19 pandemic hit Zimbabwe, we knew how much people were really struggling to put food on the table with their income sources being taken away. And so we've been scaling up ever since then. And right now we're delivering to 327,000 people across Zimbabwe. And we know that people really need this urgent food assistance right now which we deliver in the form of cash transfers uh, through an e-voucher and through a remittance based uh, service as well and we know how much families are um, being able to be more food insecure and to um, face some stability and um, peace right now thanks to the food that they're getting. So that was uh, the, Ms. K. Neville of the World Food Programme speaking with VOA is Zimbabwe's country Maramba in Maswingo. So there's a program that has been rolled out in Maswingo, you know. And this program, Marvelous, it seems as if it's helping a lot of people in Maswingo. And it was also rolled out in Chinoy. So, okay, Zulukanda Balo, okay, Nkosa Zana, KM Neville, Latilim Zekuluma, where World Food Program is city. Kulotelo, Lokutabantu, Panigwe, Okuchieneo. Ika Kuluba, Nikwa Makati, Okutiba Tengu Udla. So, Kanya Azani, Nga Makati Lao, Let's hear what one of the beneficiaries from Mashingo had to say. Uh, as what Gibbs said, yes, the program was also rolled out in Chinoy. As the gating bonds was on Gashu Gutawa, Nevam with a Kawanika Ivo, Vachi, Wana Rubatsiro Kubaku World Food Program, a Pacific Chirong Waito Chiche WFP. I think I'm such a chironga chironga but I say in Parama when you special dream why COVID.
kati singa japani siku honda ninyo ya kutuka itikine korona saka saka kwa nisa ukura la makuchumpuza ni chulo mpati saka kwa nisa ukura nisa uchikafu kwa nisa ukura tichikuta saka tunjwe chongo tenda wa mwari kutijia makati rangari katanga wabla mna tisema novemba mati mari yangu inini ya kata sukuti nunoke mune kuda kwe prosi sukuti basara wara ya rakati wangini angi ya kata sukuti amu na maja asuma ya juu ya sewe uyuzuma suru kwe sinaka pata piyo saka churombai chicheka wa ya chika tibe sera shikuru cha isu mkuda kuku na musikuti kaya takati ya risana naru minya ya ikono miyumika muno uya sweti rauti sukuti kaya ya kati kwe piya ka uya sewe reti helpa upenyu wedu Nanti tangga tak cari sana nak campur apa kanya ni sih. Mati nak udah kuku untuk cek cip ini kau kagai cakap kuku. Penuh hidup orang aku fambo sekarang mana. Kurang makan aku cuci cuci nesa. Kuku tu kuku. Upaya saya kuku tuan es kaf tu kuku tenggelam buri. Mari kuku tenggelam buri. Mari kuku tenggelam buri kaf. Saya nak cuci cuci nesa. Kuku tu aku ngaji nesa. Ofan aku muda dapat kerja. Saya nak udah kuku aku tu ke. Yang kaya tu kaya pin dia. Nak kau kaya tu sebut orang kau tu orang tu aku tu jas. Sangka sangka cakap ni esok tu hati Maria aku yang kapten yang phone. Kalau angka wajah tu ikut ke trans trans. Maria aku yang kapten yang phone. Wajah yang dah okey. Aku pun bila aku mampu risa wajah risa. Mesej yang aku mampu risa. Wajah aku wajah aku wajah aku punis. Mudah lagi kalau kita berjaga. Kini dalam jenaran jana macam. Jenaran anak anak. We were hearing there from um, we are hearing there from one of the beneficiaries of the World Food Program in Mashingo. Yes, yeah, so it seems as if uh, many people are really benefiting from this program, uh, marvelous. And they, these beneficiaries are actually saying that, you know, COVID-19 has caused havoc in communities. And we've seen that even here in USA, there are millions of people who are benefiting from some, you know, programs that are being rolled out by NGOs, some by the government, but the government has been, you know, having problems in rolling out some checks for people. So these things are very, very, very challenging. You know, Zulubanye, Abe Masu, Bokonale, Bekulumage, Motelo, Lolle, all the helpful program, Lomneta, Abantu, Abang and Batulin Zima. COVID-19. So there are other programs, marvelous in Zimbabwe, being created by the government in conjunction with non-governmental organizations and some nations. One of the projects is known as Fumbuza into as a program. And then it is initiated to, it was initiated to by the British government. We spoke about the program with Kate Tetton, who is the development director at the British Embassy. This Let's hear what she said about this all season, this. season, 1919 to 2020, we had about 9,800 households, which was piloting the Fumfutsa program. So that was testing it out. This season, next season that's just coming up, we're hoping to expand that to 250,000 households um, in, in Manika land, Mashvingo, and Moshona land. So tell us a bit about these programs. Who is actually benefiting? So the whole idea of Mfutsa is to sort of really target those small farmers, smallholders who have very sort of limited patches of land uh, and really help them get the most out of that land and increase that productivity, especially during these times of erratic climate. So obviously for the last few years in Zimbabwe, we've seen you know, periods of drought. So we're targeting smallholders um, who probably have about one sixteenth of, um, of a, a hectare uh, and what we really want to do is ta uh, target those households with a package of seeds and improved agricultural practices to really help them get the most out of those small plots and ensure that they have enough food for their families. How do we identify the families? So we, we're looking for fa families that have about a sixteenth of a hectare of land, so a small household plot next to their, to their or close to their homes, and also farmers that also have 
a little bit of capital to buy some of the inputs, obviously seeds and some fertilizer, and those households with enough land to cultivate the, the plot carefully, because there's some quite um, some, some good guidelines that we've, been, we've developed to make sure that we get the most out of the, the, out of the land. So in, in terms of the impact of this program, tell us a bit about it. So we're quite excited by the, by the program because for a limited amount of inputs and some very careful cultivation, um, we sort of see that a household can probably secure about 33 weeks of cereal. So almost enough for a household to get through, through the year, about two thirds of the year. And that's a family of six. So, you know, obviously in these difficult times, hopefully improving food security for those people that previously had to buy food in the market, had to buy cereals in the market. Now we see that uh, when uh, people are engaged in these programs, they've got small plots and they use some rudimentary implements. Exactly what, what do they do in terms of planting whatever they're planting? So, yeah, so, so for the even FUTSA program has developed a very careful set of guidelines, which includes firstly sort of um, mapping out the plots to ensure proper spacing between the plants. So um, a number of rows are, are dug and then along those rows, the farmer will cultivate a small pit, um, which is then going to sort of where the seed and the fertilizer and the organic fertilizer will be sort of put in. Uh, and then that's covered with, with topsoil and watered carefully through the season. So a package of inputs and then some very careful guidelines. And the most important bit of this new technology is the, the mulching that happens. So this is covering the cultivated plot with residues from either livestock or grasses or leaves to really lock in that moisture and to prevent and to, to bring in more organic matter to make that soil more fertilizer. But it's locking in the moisture during these areas, during these seasons of erratic rainfall, that's the real key. And talking about the yields in such kind of uh, cultivation methods, how yeah, are so, the yields? So we've seen through, so one of the, gra the, the great things about this, this technology on this, this package of practices is it's been very carefully tested in farmers' fields. So not necessarily developed on the research station, but really tested in farmers' fields. And in those pilots last year with those 9,000 households, we see, saw some of those um, families realising about eight um, tonnes per hectare of a yield. And if you compare that to uh, land that's cultivated without these careful practices and without this careful mulching and, and watering, we see around 0.5 to 1 uh, tonne per hectare. So really significant increases in the yields that um, farmers are realising. What type of crops are actually uh, grown, you know, using these techniques? Yeah. So at the moment, we're focusing on maize, which is obviously the staple of um, preferred crop of, of most Zimbabweans. Um, but there's the, the principles of the technology. So the kind of careful use of organic matter, the mulching and the right combination of organic and inorganic fertilizer. Those principles can be applied to many other crops. So we'd like to see them probably extended to small grains such as millets and sorghum, particularly in those drier areas, but also legume crops. So that whole package of you know proper spacing proper fertilizing proper weeding is, is really a technology that can be applied to all crops and that will be the next step can you say that your program is actually uh, environmentally friendly uh we yes we can i think the, the whole kind of background of the program has been developed with uh, um resilience to climate change in mind and with you know maximum use of inorganic and organic fertilizers together in a careful combination so using um, mulches, um, leaving crop residues in the field to sort of um, fertilize the soil, reducing chemical fertilizer to the, to the minimum level that's effective. So, you know, reducing that down as much as possible, combining it with organic fertilizer so we get a real synergy between the two. All of these kind of principles are about kind of improving the environment, but also building resilience to, to climate change. Yes, uh, marvelous. So that is uh, Kate uh, Teton. She is the development director at the British Embassy. So la poke be kuluma nguti ifumbuza le ivele kuini. So ube ube kanje so wa nguti ifumbuza a project enganuka tegi lega kul. So ge to you marvelous. Aiwa apo tanga trukuns wakuva kunere British Embassy barukuta ora iwo pam soro pe chirongwa chefumbuza. Vanga barukuta ora uti chirongwa ichi chino revei 
uye shekuti e, chaka mira sei parishino uh, pane shanga shurikuta urwa izo na urwa ya waita na gibbs tube wekuno wa murko na aripa na pachirongwa asi tukwe ndere ramberi chicha ura shakari nevamo ewe e, e, british e, embassy yoyo gibbs tube aita shakari urukuro uh, ne mumwe weku embassy yiku okore gaiti nzikwe kutari kutichi gibbs yes that's uh, margaret masanga who is the british embassy's communications uh, manager let's hear what she says about fomboza Indo asa lushelo olu segelwa ngabe UK aid. Gulo lushelo abe UK aid base benzalana labalimi aba figure 9,800. Mwomnyago zayo sikangelele uguti abe UK aid baza besebe ngetisana labalimi aba figure 250,000. Abalimi aba gushelo lolu olwe indo asa Hilabo ogubizwa kutuwa ngama small holder farmers. Aba tolagala enda weni ezi ngatoli amanzi. E nelisu guti aba limibashanye liba vune ugula. Aba za ugula umyaga wonge. Yinda o esengo zinye drought lenjala. Aba limi aba sebenzisa ama methods. Awe intoasa. Ba vuna ugula. Aba, ne, aba nelisu guti bagule. Owa mavigi angu 33. Njalo lapo umlimi ayetola kona 0.5 tons use tola 8 tons. Aba limi, aba ushelolo intoasa iskatesi nengi baketa ugulima umumbu. Nje nguba ischwala kuyikho ugula wetu esu kutandayo wele zimbabu. Ushelolo intoasa lusebenzisa ika kulu outuwa ngama organic fertilizer. Baatla nganisa yebo lama inorganic fertilizer. Kutwa ganengi ngama organic fertilizer ase chenziswa ayo. Mwuba si kangelane le climate change. Njalo si funu uti si vigele leo climate change. E, si kangele uguza o waka umzimba. Uche lolue into asa lutolagala guma province ati zewele Zimbabwe. Uchelele liluko na emmanika land, emashona land, emnit land, njalo gela sema tepele land. Great. Masanda, who is talking about this project. So, uh, according to uh, Ms. Masanda, uh, this project is a, a very big project because there are many, many farmers who are set to benefit uh, in the near future. Uh, she's saying thousands and thousands of farmers are likely to get assistance uh, next year. So it's going ahead and um, she's hopeful that uh, these farmers, our small water farmers, farmers will benefit a lot. I think we've got one of the farmers, Marvelous. Would you want to hear what uh, the farmer is saying? Yes, at uh, six thirty nine, we'll call it. But now we're going to and my Vangavaru Kupa, we're going to talk to our Ivo. We're going to talk to our Ivo. We're going to talk to our British Embassy. E, shuruku batisira e, varime vaka wanda. Sikuta wala kurukuita Gibsons varime vaka wanda vashangi varuku batisirwa. Pasipe chiru ngwa ichi. Sakari gaiti ende kune mwe murimi. Tinsu kwe kuti shuruku famba say, let's go to our farmer and hear how the program is going. Kutiti wani, ningati paku wana gura kanaka. Davandu tzika, shukuru nukuti, taisi mboti donji, chibagi. Doza ziri mbe uzedu. Asi ya shunda kawa, davandu tzika pa unifara kuri mbe uza kawanda. Zino kuna kundi pa chikafu chaka kwana. Ipa apu ndaka wandu zika uskuru na uti apani chisi na chimwe chincha ndo tambura. Ii ndi maema sunflower. Yes. Zave nzungu zese iti. Eka zwara nzungu pana. Nzungu zache ndo uba zaatwa. Zaatwa ndaku mbora mbafu ndaka zambarara. Ndoku ya ndo uba ndaka funga uti mafuta zwa anu neta. Kunyangu uti singa fandu kutiti jika kwa wanda na uti nzungu zara amba. Dosha ya mafuta, zora zote abutano wangu unenge watu ipi. Mafuta chato ndi batisira wani ya nchawa na ku sunflower. Laka bandaisa sunflower ya njimai. Kutindi guwa na kutindi wane mafuta wakuta ndi batisira. Sezo nzungu za zaramba. Pandimai nzungu ya karamba ya ndo bandaisa nyemba. Ngati nyemba izi izi. Zoto ndi batisira wafuti. Ia zutukuta na mriyo za kuda kubereka. Inyemba zose zandaka zara paka banzungu, paka chwa nzungu. Zora za hizo kutia nambo mira kana kuwata Ya karamba nchifamba Saka nyemba za vepo e, Masanfla wa vepo e, Tijungo famba nindi macho Tichino shika pa mingirikiri Pa muonzi hapo Tupatai safuti muonzi Kutizigo tibatira mananga Nezimwe 
Zunai zokuti achikafa ntombo tambura ntombo sikuti ni chachi shayo. So that's one of the farmers, uh, marvelous, very interesting stuff there, right? Uh, yes, uh, it's interesting, you know, that, uh, you know, people are now coming out of all these programs that are being assisted. Uh, we saw there the WFP people coming up and saying, yes, the food is helping them through COVID-19. Now this farmer is speaking about the program that the British are assisting with. So interesting stuff there, Gibbs. Yes, and then uh, this issue on people that are being evicted in Arara, what is going on? Uh, Gibbs, that's a really, you know, a lot of people are, you know, taking, you know, they are really upset about what is going on in Budiriro because they don't know who is responsible. They are saying that the MDC Alliance has the councillors, has the mayor, but they fall under local government, which is Dano PM. So who exactly is responsible uh, for some of these families? Because we've seen our reporter went out there, uh, Godwin Mangujga, in the rain and spoke to some of these uh, residents of Budiriro because we've seen some of their houses being demolished. But in one of the videos, one of the residents of Budiriro, when they asked apparently, you know, the grouping or the cooperative under which uh, this housing scheme was based, they actually said they had a court order to demolish the houses of another, you know. So it's really confusing to understand what is going on in Harare at the moment, but a lot of people are really up in arms to say this needs to be resolved because it's raining in Harare at the moment. There are families that are out there with school children. Some of them are even saying they lost their documents for their children, you know, their birth certificates. All the important documentation was raised away because they were given no notice. So these are some of the issues that uh, we've been seeing happening this week at a time when COVID-19 is really very rife in Harare and worldwide, including here in America, Gibbs. Yes, uh, we've got one of the people who was actually evicted, but before going there, Zakuluma, so so Okuluma akoloku. Sizo kutu ten mavlas. Mubabalapa enko jeni. Na ula. Kana yungu mas mabili. Kambili msirezi. Nika lapa ngabona kule mkute chaki. Ye rae kukolis. Le mota ye le kukanso. E ngatu ucheme nukaji. Ate kona. Waza mta kume lao. Mbutu wabia kuzo kupanya inja wale. Kuki nga hii. Pat. Alazana bakwansu kutupe mpe ikot oja. Was the China space lapa as I have to even a in what is the two minutes to lay in doubt? Am I in the chimney order? At the top of one ice bed at the square, the two good cases in the day. So slim mood is Lavantuana, Amapita Vantuana, Wonke, one to a disorder. Amapuka Vantuana, Machesi, Bogomaches, Bogonke, one to a disorder. So stand down in Zima, Naz, which is in a Kilanjan. So these people of Marvelous have been living uh, in this place for 10 years and all of a sudden somebody is homeless. Yes, uh, Gibbs, I actually had an earlier program on uh, Let's Talk Ngati Kurkure and the outrage that some people were really spewing out. They were saying most of these uh, residential stands are usually given prior to elections. So sometimes people are, you know, so euphoric, they are not asking about, you know, the authenticity of the stands, and then they do get the stands, but also the city council for a house to get to that stage, they would have gone through the various, you know, inspections. So th that's what some of the people are saying. But, you know, we have over 100 families that are being affected uh, by uh, these, these demolitions. And we don't know, or they are saying that they don't know whether this is the last demolition that's going to happen, or they can expect more. Uh, because right now, nobody is really coming out and saying who is responsible for these demolitions. But, you know, it's, they're affecting people, over 100 families. So we just have to wait and, and, and find out what's going on. Mm. So meanwhile, uh, in the United States, uh, marvelous, uh, there's a lot that is happening. 
uh, President uh, Donald Trump uh, pushed ahead yesterday uh, with his long, short effort to append his election, re-election loss to President-elect Joe Biden, meeting at the White House with the Republican state attorney generals who are supporting a lawsuit brought by the state of Texas at the Supreme Court to attempt to invalidate millions of, vote, of votes in states won by Biden. Some legal experts uh, apparently say the lawsuit won't succeed. Media projections indicate that Mr. Biden has 306 electoral votes and Trump 232. Electors vote next week for the next president following the November 3rd uh, nationwide election. Meanwhile, President-elect uh, Biden yesterday announced several uh, m- more nominees for top posts, uh, who actually include former United Nations Ambassador Susan Rice. So there's a lot that is happening, Marcus. Yes, yeah. um, and um, a lot of people are actually, you know, waiting to see what's going to happen because they say that uh, the United States is the mother picture for democracy. So they are very interested to see what is going to happen here in the United States. Uh, Tambotari sa Yesu, shanga shuri kuitika ku WFP kumashingo, uh, nekune zimwe njimbo tikatari sa shanga shuri kuitika uh, kuarare kubudiru kutaona e muriza kawanda zichiputzi ruwa zimba. Asi parijino, tukutari sa shuri kuitika imo muno mwa Amerika, apu parikune tapa kutambi zana uh, kwe masimba, pakatipe, uh, ivari mutunga miri we Amerika parijino, wa Donald Trump, vema Republicans, na wa Joe Biden, vema Democrats, apu wakawani kwa yu wachikunda kunjimbo za kawanda, Uyeje parijino waka tarisi kwa kuti shondo runo uya. Pa wani kwe ipo e, gungano rie runo re electoral college nchizo. Wani kwa rishitaura kutinduo waka kunda. Asi wa Trump parijino wari kuyeza. E, ne pese pa wano kwa nisa a, kuti varati ze kuti iwa wasi kutambira. Shaka buda musaruzo izi. Wari kuti saruzo izi. Azina kufambi skwa shaka naka. Asi tunuona kuti mapazi. E, uru mende imuno mu Amerika. Akada ise e, attorney general wa muno. Anova ya kagazwa na wadona Trump, e, vaka wani kwa hivyo wachiti aiwa e, saruzo zemo Amerika izi, zaka itkwa, e, shaka naka uyeshe, kutipa siru osene iyo nyika ya Amerika zitambire, shaka buda msaruzo, saka ndoshu mwenshuri kuitika, imo muno Paris no Gibbs. Ye, yeah, unja alo jia mkono kukie uba wa mavila, kanya mzenu kietu lume lika lapa, kulopu zima sivili. Naska ngela ki uko zagala yu umo kameli Donald Trump, usepa nyege utaba, e Supreme Court, lapa funu kutu kulatwe ama votes, Africa ama million I to say. So what you get we get to the Zong and Fanelo and on the Wisconsin, a Pennsylvania, Michigan, the Georgia. What was over Guabalo e Georgia? Guabalo foot in Michigan, Guabalo foot Wisconsin, or to abati about twenty, what to get to look out Kutranga in Fanal and Fanel. So as you want to ask Kangela, we are Pambil. Kulaba Tony General Abraham Bay, a White House is all, a Abab Vera and Donna's name. The Republican Party, the Trump. We have to vote in states and four. We Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Wisconsin. So, we have to vote in Atlanta. We vote in Atlanta. We vote in Atlanta. We have vote in Atlanta. We have to vote in Atlanta. We have to vote in Atlanta. We have to vote in Atlanta. We Mwaka meli we meli kakuketua ala kutuwa electoral college. Electoral mm-hmm. college yake la pansi, ikazu lule, ime sisi ya voter foot. Mwaka manji nga kukangelo, upa iten ulama electoral college eh, eh, votes, high 306, kuzo buya ke u Trump, le 332. Iko exactly anga wangako eh, u Hillary Clinton, umiaka 2016. So ke, abantu wa waka zikuti, kwa zala nko mwoni. So sige sisiwe ke, eh, abanyi, eslabo, marvelous, we are lucky that we have got eh, a geopolitical analyst, and that is uh, Miss uh, Pell Matibe. So, Miss Matibe, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much uh, for reaching out to me. How are you doing today? No, we're very well. So, break it down for us. What is going on here? Very brief. Sure. Well, so here's the thing. You know, as well as I do, that the pace at which news and things happen in, in Washington, D.C., it, cha- it can change uh, very, very quickly. So basically what happened is last night, President Donald Trump got together with members of his party who were the elected officials in Congress in the House, and 106 
of those House representatives signed what is called a legal document. It's called uh, an amicus brief. Basically, what an amicus brief is, it's just a legal document, which means that a, someone who is not party to the case is aiding and helping the courts to move the case along. So it's an amicus brief. 106 of those um, uh, Republicans signed it. Among them, there are some moderates and some liberals in there. Um, but I know that uh, Mitt Romney is not one of them. And, uh, and there have been some criticisms from people in his own party. For example, Senator Sassy is saying that it's more of a PR stunt as opposed to something that they really want to have passed. But we've listened to um, Attorney General Ken Paxton. Ken Paxton is the one who is really the front lead on this, um, on this lawsuit. And remember that just before we went into the election, uh, President Trump did have his Supreme Court justice nominee uh, approved who is now in the Supreme Court. So basically that's what's happened. There's a lot of criticism on both sides. A lot of people on the left are saying that uh, this lawsuit has got will go nowhere and that it will be defeated again. But uh, if you take a look at the, the pace at which the Republicans are moving, uh, we had the Vice President Pence speaking in Georgia and he was praising the lawsuit. In fact, uh, his own words to the people at the rally was he was saying uh, he is telling people that they must protect their God-given rights. President Pen uh, Vice President Pence also told them to hold the line. In other words, they're promoting the idea that they need to stay steadfast. They are trying to overturn the election results. So what we know right now is that there is the expectation the president-elect Biden will come in and be inaugurated in January. What this lawsuit does, it's an attempt to overturn the election results of four states. That's Georgia, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Bear in mind that the votes in Michigan that they're trying to overturn is 5.5 million votes that they're trying to overturn in Michigan alone. So basically that is what is happening. Um, I think it just means that we just need to be patient. Um, as you know, um, I certainly keep my finger on the pulse in Washington because things can change very literally by the minute. Uh, things can change and so we're monitoring the situation very closely uh, and, and see what will, what will happen with that outcome. Mm, marvelous. Um, Nesha Murko na shirukiti kwa idhi si mshare matibe. Jino revei kune urongo wa kutiwa Joe Biden wa guards we mswa January twenty six shanga shaka rong. Apana jino chaz sawa Biden kutiwa guards we muna January. Kana shirukiti kwa noa Trump shirukiti sanye kumatare shika safamba. Dinona wa Biden wa chizu, nansu pinda, pasinaka na zuninge za shawa misa. Nikutima processes, ese, ekupinza wa Biden. Aka to tangwa. And uh, what do I mean when I say um, the processes have already started? So there are several things that take place that happen to put a president into, um, into, into office. Um, one of those things is they've already set up offices the um, there's a, a budget. The General Services Administration gives them 6.3 million dollars, which is uh, approved by by Congress for them to hire people. That's why you can see right now Atotanga, which I say Atotanga pikupawa nuake zinjimbo zani gachida, and you can see pukutipaniwa nuake varu saruza Biden, varu saruza vanu vagara varu vanu var pejgo na yendo vanu var piwa zinjimbo. Manana Susan Rice or Mamma Shower Manjmanja. Van Vanga Pajuna, Ekanadwaka Boshanda Muchi, Mu government, Yava Obama. The other thing which is happening is going to be, um, for instance, the Department of Justice in Israel, Zainu Itao, Pauquiti Zinzacho Shifambe. As it's Ninga Tiriko inauguration. In any Pachang would be in that Ninga Diriko, Chimonita, Chono, Zinzufamba say, as in Vanas, Pipsukaiko. 
must we say every day to English go to research one out to such a school in your family say Tom Potter is our Africa Nyanya Zimbabwe but you want us to be together but who should tell me that's it um yeah thank you for that question I think he Chikuru Vani was tell us out to evil mama what garage chins in Gavetta my elections are free, fair, and credible. That garage chins was by Nevons, free, fair, and credible, free, fair, and credible. Change it to not a way to the free, fair, and credible. So let me just explain what that means in terms of democracy. And before I just uh, speak a little bit about the essence and the theory and the philosophy of what is democracy, uh -huh. let's try to remember that. The United States, everybody looks at the United States and says, that's the democracy, that's the model for the world. I think that there's a misconception in that view. And that is because even though the United States has had a democracy and has been having elections for the last 244 years, a, this country is 244 years old, but democracy anywhere in the world, even with the more advanced countries, is not perfect. And that is the, 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 the political philosophy. If you had liked, wanted to take a look at the theoretical meaning of what is in a democracy, basically you look at two things, right? You look at the fact that you need to be having free, fair elections, and that is characterized by a transfer of power. And then you also need to have liberal speech and association and so on. So in African countries, you have less freedom to speak to speak and to be and associate with whomever you want to. Uh, but certainly what you're seeing in the United States right now is a key tenant. When you, when you want to identify and see this country has got democracy, the primary thing is going to be, was there an election? Was it free? Mm -hmm. Was it fair? And not only that, was there a transition of power? They go hand in hand. Can't just have free, fair elections and not have a transition of power. And that is the hurdle and the challenge that, Zimbabwe, that uh, the United States is having now. What I'll say about that quickly is that what we are witnessing in the United States is democracy working. So even Why do you say the, that? Because I'm, most I'm people a, are saying this, we are it, the democracy here is working very well. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the wheels of democracy turning. So people who want to study and learn and see, okay, this is what is happening in democracy. It is happening live, evolving. History is actually taking place. So while President Trump has got the right to do what he wants to do, because remember, he is still the man who has the job. He is still president of the country until January 20. The institutions of the United States are strong. And so I do not have any uh, concerns at the moment. Uh, yes, something may go through to the Supreme Court on the off chance that the election results are overturned. Then we have to understand that the Supreme Court, three of the Supreme Court judges were appointed by Trump. So they are in there, appointed by the person who put them there to go and do the work that he wanted them to go do there. That is part of how democracy works. And so you may end up with a result that you may not like, but you have. To, if you want to embrace democracy, then you need to understand what comes with being a democratic country. Whereas in an African country or in Zimbabwe and so on, there's less tolerance for things that you may not agree with. So I, I just think that um, in different political spheres, uh, the electorate is, has got different levels of being how mature they are in their democracy uh -huh. and at what level that country has reached democracy. For instance, in Zimbabwe, you might say uh, this is a country well, that has been looking for and trying to get into democracy, but it's not. It has been leaning to being authoritarian, leaning to being... Um, an illiberal democracy because we know that the president, President Mnangagwa, is definitely an autocrat. There's many, there's a lot of evidence that we know and we can see, tangible scientific evidence that that is what, that is what Zimbabwe has turned into. Different to the United yes, States, institutions, and they, will, and they will work, the institutions will work. 
at that level, let's let's bring in Priscilla Ndlovu, who is a Zimbabwean living in Washington State. Let's hear what she says about all these issues concerning democracy and, you know, what is going to happen next. There she comes. As I'm election, say, our America is simo as a war at Tessie. Ah, Sinzi Maracullu, Silo Cose. Who to Trump Rambe and a way a winning foot of my elections can be a pendulum with me in our lapata in a la conmutan a pendula. Beso to a way of winning lay. Hatch, Menambona look so umbale, Wukachana. Mwaba weshule la paza meko nguti kupinde ubalo ama elections. Avaliwe impumela yawe ilogi situ paite nuwe nili. Loka seza mbu wenza. Iguti jena mwaba nguye isi mosa ake. Nguta la wako kuwa umuntu, uwa umuntu wake. Umuntu nguye. Agafunu uvuma utu weshule gile. Kumbe weshule. Uza aguza ze upele ufila nga lo kini loge kathila. Eza mguti achinje impumele. Lo mteto ga umfumele. Amboni minutu mteto wakona unga mfumele wa yupi. Mwuse za mile. Usefage ya matala ama nenga kula matala ati vile nga ifagiwe. Ama kozi afige awalali. Acho lo uti kabala so isi zato umbe kabala ko ukini leo ujenza uti ba walesi zato so uti waba lo ukili nyeskati so uvota lo kunje so uiskati sake so uti abe lo ukotu mali wila wana bavu mayo uti asambe nisi elwisa yi elekshin uguliwa nje uguliwe akusela mteto mpoza mpoza mneta uti apendule yi elekshin. Siza mbugela nje mshara 20 uza puma hambe mzino haki. So according to uh, Mrs. Nlovu, uh, that is Priscilla Nlovu in Washington State, uh, Mr. Trump is attempting to do the impossible and she believes that uh, he's not going to succeed in whatever he's going to do. Uh, in whatever he's doing, what's your take on exactly uh, 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 kind of remarks, you know, uh, Ms. Matibe? Um, yeah, so I think that um, uh, her view that uh, President Trump will not succeed, she's not the only one that thinks so. And so um, I think everybody, uh, well, let me just say, many people in the mainstream media on the left, which means that people who generally uh, lean towards the democratic ideology, uh, have the thinking and belief that President Trump will not succeed in this lawsuit and that it is a last ditch effort, that type of thing. Um, and, and so because uh, this is a country where everybody has the freedom to uh, to have an opinion, which is great, right? Um, I, what we are seeing right now is Ken Paxton. Ken Paxton is an attorney general, right? And he is the front runner uh, with, with this lawsuit. Uh, 106 House representatives are all legislators. These are people who make laws. So this is a contest, a competition of legal minds on both sides. What we need to watch for are those elements within the law and how each step will move forward. Because you can't have 106 legislators who make laws signing an amicus brief that they believe cannot work and go through legally. So they've signed a legal document. A lot of them are lawyers themselves on the left. So this is an ideological contest. I think it, it, it is a good time for us to examine the American pieces of law about the transition of power. So I personally am very excited about um, being able to, to study and take a look at what is actually happening uh, here. Where are there gaps in pieces of legislation and where there are no gaps in pieces of legislation?
But what I did want to stress is that what I am very concerned about, what is happening in the United States right now, as I said to you, is transition of power is the last element that validates and shows you that there was free, fair, and credible elections. And so what I hope will not happen is a disenfranchisement of people who went to the poll believing that their vote would count. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I hope that um, democracy prevails and I hope that the proper processes and law will take place. But I do want to say that I do bear in mind that the Supreme Court does have three Republican Supreme Court judges who were themselves appointed by President Trump. Uh, at the moment, my understanding is that President-elect Biden is continuing with his transition. Um, and and uh, we've been seeing a lot of movement, uh, you know, of things going on at the State Department. So I can see already that within the institutions of government, we're already seeing the transition going, you know, process taking place. The, the starting over of, of you know, um, briefings and, and, and so on. I know Biden has some hurdles with uh, briefings from the Pentagon last week, uh, but some of those things will be will be overcome, I believe. I, I just would like... Thank you so much, Ms. Matibe. We, we are well, ready. hopefully that Matibe. President Trump will not continue to abuse his power. That is another concern mm -hmm. that, that, we, that we have. Uh, but I believe that United States institutions are strong and uh, democracy will prevail. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Matibe. L let's go to uh, uh, Dr. Simba Mavaza of ZANU-PF. Uh, Dr. Mavaza, how are you? Fine, fine, sir. How are you? Um, I'm well. Uh, what's your take on what is going on in USA in terms of the uh, outcome of the election and Mr. Trump taking the matter to the Supreme Court? Okay, let me make it in, in a very simple way for, for those who are non-lawyers. Mm -hmm. uh, st uh, strictly, what Mr. Trump has done is within the law. He has a dispute with the results of the elections. He has a dispute in particular areas, in particular um, demeanor uh, of, of how the elections were, were done. So he has a right then to take this matter to court. Now, there, there is one issue we need to clarify here. While my um, learned colleague here was believing that um, in, this, in the uh, Court of Appeal, which is the Supreme Court, has got uh, three uh, Trump's uh, judges, it, it is a wrong uh, uh, assumption. What happens is any president appoints judges. If a judge is appointed by a president, the moment he becomes a judge, is no longer aligned to the appointer. So even though a, a judge a judgeship in America and uh, now in Zimbabwe, it's a, a, a matter of the presidential appointment. It does not mean that if you are appointed by the president, you are you are uh, bound by the president's wishes. There are so many judges who have been appointed by different presidents and they've ruled against them, like the uh, uh, chief justice of Kenya, who had retired today, he ruled against this, the, the same government which had um, appointed him. And um, still, it, it, it did not make him um, an enemy of the government. So in other words, let us not start uh, pouring water into the results of the court ruling by saying already three of them support uh, Trump. No, they are lawyers, they are judges, uh, they've got um, a credibility issue which they have to prove out there. Again, the point is, as I've said last time, uh, I wish... Um, uh, in, in Como was here today. Uh, Gibbs Como was actually telling me to swallow my words because I had said earlier on Trump might not uh, will not lose. Uh, if you remember our last um, discussion, mm -hmm. as of today, technically Trump is not yet lost. That's why he's challenging it. Of course, in our eyes, he's lost because um, uh, Joe Biden is already preparing to take over. But what my sister has not said clearly is. As long as this legal challenge is um, subsisting in court, there will be no, there will be no. Um, in, uh, um, actually, the, the president will not ascend um, to the to the throne or to the seat of presidents uh, when there is a case pending.
So if this is still pending, uh, we, we forget about the 20th of January. But if it is finished before the 20th of January, then the uh, it, it then depends which, which side is the court ruled for and how the court has ruled, whether it's a rerun of the whole country or whether they declare one of the two a winner. But for now, we cannot be so excited that Joe Biden is going to take over. Legally speaking, he cannot when there's a challenge. Uh, once there's a challenge, uh, everything else stops. If you remember um, in, in Zimbabwe, the um, the president, the, the tents were already set up at National Sports Stadium. But when Chamisa took his case up um, to the Constitutional Court, everything was stopped until there was a ruling. So either way, this is the, the, the cause of the law. Otherwise, Biden will be actually um, being contemptuous if he, if he continues for coronation um, on a day when the court is still have to decide whether he is a legitimate uh, president or not. And furthermore, we need to understand that in um, the, the American democracy is not as democratic as we believe or as what they sell to the world over. To start with, uh, it, it is not your vote which counts. It is those elders um, thinking which counts. If they believe that um, Trump uh, would come in, we can vote and vote and there will be meetings and meetings. Whoever is supposed to come in will come in. You will see how Trump came in uh, against Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton won and um, there was a lot of American uh, jargon on the college votes and all these issues. And then it came up to be uh, Trump the winner. Trump is seeking the same way which brought him into power to be used now. Uh, but in fact, in way, when we look at uh, when we look at the electoral votes, you know, Trump got more than uh, Hillary Clinton in 2016. Exactly the same way is happening right now. Just one minute. Let's bring in uh, Matibe for a minute. So Matibe, when we look at uh, what uh, the Dr. Mabasa is saying, do you actually agree with him that uh, maybe at the end of the day? Biden may not be inaugurated. Just very brief. Um, so, uh, Dr. Uh, Mavaza, I appreciate uh, his comments. Certainly, I appreciate his comments. Um, but I think that uh, he is actually incorrect in the uh, uh, assessment, the political assessment of the pace and the mood and how American government politics takes place here. I am in Washington, D.C., and I have been following... Uh, American government politics extremely close. In fact, that is what I study on a daily basis. I've, I've, I am in and out of both campaigns, multiple campaigns. So I just want to uh, clarify. When American presidents elect or nominate, uh, sorry, nominate their appointee to the, to the Supreme Court and it is approved by Congress, that is one of the most important aspects of American politics the appointment of Supreme Court justices. For this very reason, for this very reason. And so I think that it would, it is, it is not, um, it, it is correct to say that we need to assess the situation, bearing in mind that one of the reasons why the last Supreme Court justice was quickly moved through the approval process in Congress prior to the election, was in, in anticipation of something like this, right? Um, that is not to say that when the case is before them, that they will vote in favor of Trump. I am just saying that we need to be aware of that. If they look at the case and the facts of the case, yes, as legal ju uh, uh, justices, they can also rule against it. But let's wait and see how these legal processes will proceed. I wanted to mention one other thing. 30 seconds. Uh, yes. On Monday, there's going to be a very important vote in Congress because the election results still need the certification process. And uh, I believe we're expecting Biden to get about 306 votes in Congress on Monday and uh, Trump about 232 votes on Monday. So there's still some voting to be done that is pertaining to this presidential election. And so on Monday, we will be following that process very, very closely. Thank you very much. I think our time is up. Uh, we take this uh, moment to thank our guests. Uh, that is Ms. Pilma Kibe, a geopolitical analyst.
and Dr. Simba Mavaza of Zambia for UK. Signing off is Gibbs Jube in Washington, D.C. saying, Good night, Zimbabwe. I want to tender this, Vangavari Pachurong, what you do, Mushare Peo Matibe, to no tender you, eh, Dr. Simba Mavaza, but we are the Taku Pets, I should want to no tender. Akunge manga mwini su tusanga na shakare shundo nuya. Ini ndi ni marvelous mflanganya huye. Ndiri kumba munomu Washington DC. Good night.